Do you like your low-budget zombie films all stripper-pulled up with Halloween store makeup, community theater acting, badly rendered CGI effects, endless narration, and machete actor Danny Trejo taking a break between better projects to barely appear on camera? We've got all that and much, much more with Zombie Hunter. And before we flush it, we're going to take it out and play with it a little. We're here to flush it, so you don't have to see it. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. I am Honor Knight, your head cinematic flusher right here in the restroom. As always, I'm joined by my lovely co-cinematic flushers, Midwest movie mogul, Colleen Griffin. Hey, hey, hey. And raging Buddha B-movie queen, Norcrest. What's up? Our special guest this time out plays the role of Fast Lane Debbie in the film we are about to flush. In addition to her acting credits, she's modeled for various magazines, including Playboy and Muscle Mustang, appeared at car and comic conventions, and is a freestyle exotic dancer and professional pole instructor. Please welcome the lovely and talented Jade Rigier. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Every time Raging Buddha Bimu Queen Norcrest spends some time in our stall and reads the writing on the restroom wall, she's never quite the same. Let's see who turns up in this week's Raging Buddha Stats. Hi, I'm Hunter. No, that's not my actual name. But to be even more brooding and sexy, I just go by that to make me mysterious. You may be asking yourself, why do I sound like I'm doing a Will Arnett Lego Batman impression? Well, I'm from Australia. So to sound American, I've decided to go with the Batman voice. Ladies, get super excited because not only do I sound like Batman, but my slightly above average body will get you so hot that we will do it and I will keep my boots on. Zombie Hunter is a film that challenges all zombie films by keeping it to no distinct origin story, way of killing zombies, and even has CGI, steroided out predator-like zombies with no explanation for it whatsoever. I'm Hunter, and these were the stats for Zombie Hunter. Uh, that's me. Film should have been called either Machete's Limited Screen Time or The Walking Dummies. The only thing I could think of, because it was said 4,000 times, I think it was really his only line, was Stone Cold Silence. I know, yeah, we'll talk about I do. Count, yeah. I must count how many times he said it. I know, drink every time they say Stone Cold That That silence. is our drinking game. We'll yeah, we'll and you ourselves. will be Stone Cold dead. You know, shit. <laughs> If you ever wanted to see uh, what actor Danny Trejo does in, an off, in his off times between better projects, this is the film for you. <laughs> that poor guy. I'm going to talk about him because he really is barely in the film. I'm, I think it was a what is it? I uh, wouldn't what? say poor him. I think he's living his best life. Well, he's yeah. like, Danny Trejo gets to have two action montages with his <laughs> shirt off. He's amazing. He's fantastic. Uh, off screen, he fell apart. That poor guy is dying. His muscles are killing him at this point. Aww. He does so much Aww. action. I'm a massage therapist in a, another life. So I ended up actually working on him in between sets because what? he couldn't lift the axe. He's like a success story of life. I mean, I've read a lot about him and the fact that he was in and out of so many prisons and that he survived San Quentin to be like an actual human being who's decent and like doing yeah. good stuff in the world. I think he's amazing. I love Danny Trejo. I think her giving a massage is a better film than the one we watched. I think I think we had. A, why the hell did we watch that film? God damn it! But if there was anything sexy about it, I promise I would have filmed it myself. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Just like the conversations you would have, that could make like a like a fifteen minute Adult Swim series massages <laughs> with Jade and Danny. I I don't think I've seen a less motivated zombie story since the second season of The Walking Dead. This, these guys. <laughs> These guys really don't have a lot going. Yeah, I know. All right, I know. For you Walking Dead fans, deal with it. Nobody liked the second season, all right? All right, if uh, writers Kay King and Kurt Knight got married and had kids, they'd have their own KKK clan. <laughs> hey -o! Also, Kurt, Kurt Knight is not my less successful brother. I'm actually his. But I'm from. All right, all right. All right, it's a delayed, delayed, uh, we'll take it. So before we get into it, before we actually get into it, uh, Jade, how did you end up in this film? It was actually a really strange roundabout. Oh, boy. I was uh, interviewing for a film for dancer strippers, and the gal was interviewing girls that danced in Salt Lake City and their, how they got from 
one end to the other and how they became dancers. And she had way too much footage. And she said, wait a minute. I have a friend who really wants to uh, have a dancer in the movie. Would you be willing to audition for this? And so it was a last minute thing. I went in with about 10 minutes of practice, not knowing that I was auditioning for even the movie, really. Just a small part in it. And, and he ended up casting me as Fastlane Debbie instead of just the stripper on the pole. Well, go USA Entertainment. Let's try it again. Well, go USA Entertainment. Basically, we'll go somewhere else for a decent zombie film because this ain't it. That was actually funnier when I wrote it. Um, not, <laughs> was it? Was, yeah, was it funnier? No, maybe not. I don't know. I got, <laughs> all right, I got to work on that one. I'll, I'll, I'll fix that in post. There were some other production companies. The next one that came up was The Climax with a K. <laughs> and I thought, are we actually watching a porn now? Yeah. Is that what's happening? I thought it was a yeah, Skinamax movie. That would have been awesome. I didn't, but yeah, but, yeah, but you know what? No, Climax with a K sounds like dollar store lube. <laughs> uh, be silver, be vigilant. Uh, we can barely understand Danny Trail when he's on camera, so why'd they bother have him record this crappy voiceover at the top of this turd? He sounds terrible. I mean, I understand it. No, I think it's just like, okay, Danny Trejo's coming. Don't don't turn it off yet. Danny <laughs> Trejo's movie. Uh, the natives epidemic has spread rapidly through the nightclubs and the schools. This drug is Satan spelled backwards. I know. All right. And the film is so cheap it can only afford to do exposition dump on a TV box set, on a box TV set. All right. Got that. that just like I love kicked the in box one minute TV set in the little crack den. That's, I, fabulous. <laughs> that's what you would have in a crack den. Right. Box, right. That yeah, was yeah. accurate. Uh, junkies are shooting up on what looks like uh, Pepto-Bismol in the back room of an abandoned 7-Eleven. Uh, I thought you just drank 7-Eleven. I, I, oh, shit. I blew my whole joke. <laughs> well, or I thought, or Pepto-Bismol. I don't uh, but I'm bumped. There you go. Uh, all right. We'll keep rolling past that one. I don't even one. know if that makes sense, but neither does this movie. So. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, there's a drug, folks, that basically turns people into zombies, I guess. That's what happens. This is the end of the world scenario. This is zombie yeah, apocalypse the via pepto the news, At this point, when you're watching the news lady, I really thought this was going to be a porno. Like, at some point, she was just going to take her clothes off. No, we don't get that. The way she's dressed, you. there's no newscaster with the supreme plummeting chest line. We got rooked in this completely. And the library fuck me glasses right. on. Like, what was that? You're not the only one that thought that. Oh, okay. I could have that before I even saw the movie. I was like, this is going to be a porno. I don't understand how we got a guest that was actually nude in Playboy, yet she's not nude in this film. There's like, no nudity. Yeah, there's no nudity in the film. We got totally robbed. Jay, do you have any idea what the budget was in this film by any chance? Probably about $7, I'm guessing, but it was maybe a little higher on your end. I don't know. Something about the, probably similar to all the jokes you've blown, so. <laughs> oh, hey oh, oh. back. I like it. Well, I guess. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Get, I'm like, yeah, she can have her back. I guess she's got my job next week. Shit. All right, I'm off. Uh, we're just having a little fun. I'm sure he won't get mad. I, however, will be rip shit mad about having to deliver my lines inside a meat locker at the three minute but can mark. Can I just say one thing about cold. this scene in general? This guy just got fucked up. This girl <laughs> is barely coherent. Her number one concern is that her boyfriend's going to find out she's going to fuck around with some guy. This is like a sexual assault PSA well, yeah, moment. Yeah, oh in, a, in a meat locker. Like yeah. This girl is not consenting, and he's well, all no. fucked up. And then he ends up eating her face? <laughs> it's about 30 degrees inside that room, too. You can see their breath. I don't know where that was I filmed, I but noticed, yeah, I noticed that too. It's I cold as hell in there. I don't get well, that. Well, it's a crack house, I guess. No heat. <laughs> they don't have. They can't afford the heat. Well, right. and also, I'm sorry if you don't have a tongue, you can't scream normally. Right. That's, yeah, good point. Practical effect of a woman's tongue uh, being ripped out, as we we're just talking about, is completely ruined by splattering CGI blood on the camera lens at the four-minute mark. Boy, that happens a lot. It's not even like splatter on the actual lens. It's just a well, splash that... effect from like iMovie. Yeah, but it's a like... CGI <laughs> splat. But the problem is that keeps obscuring the actual practical effects that's happening in the movie as we go on. In fact, what's her name? Jade's death scene, uh, not to give away spoilers, folks, when it comes up much later on, she, you can't even see what the hell's going on because they put so much of it on the on the screen. You can't see what's happening to her. Oh, they drove me yeah. crazy on it. Look, either do it one way or the other. Either have all practical or just do all CGI. When you try to do this this hybrid stuff on these low-budget films, it doesn't work. On a big-budget film, yes, you can blend it. On this, on this shit, it's terrible. I didn't understand yeah. half of what was going on because, like, in this scene with these kids, we're only supposed to understand that they're high schoolers because one girl's in a cheerleading outfit and the other guy's in a letterman jacket. Yeah, she's they're, like, but, cosplaying from Glee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jade's probably has so many toxic chemicals on it, she's probably growing a third arm what by now. What I was now. most probably... concerned about for you guys on set, honestly, wasn't even the blood stuff. was like, what were they using to make you look dirty? Uh, cocoa. It was just cocoa? cocoa? Oh, my God, really? <laughs> That's a lot of cocoa. Tasty. I had a 
had to wear those shorts Ew. dirty with Coco on them the entire filming because they did not have another pair that looked exactly like them because oh, of the time. Ew, oh, wow. my God. oh, my God. One year later, uh, as if it really matters. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. Who gives a shit? Like, what was the concept? The concept of time, really. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Who cares? What got me about his one year later anecdote is then we cut to the inside of a 1995 Camaro with like a cassette player. I I know. Why is that? Well, I think it's a Trans Am, but all right. 150 miles an hour. Uh, well, now dip into Zombie Hunter Fury Road uh, territory is a lone warrior named Hunter, not Ace Hunter, drives like hell across the desert in a souped-up uh, Camaro, drinking straight from the bottle, listening to a crappy rock song, and dumping out an inane narration like he just came from his voiceover class. Five-minute mark. He looks like Sting's less successful brother. He looked terrible, he's, this guy. Yeah, well, he's Australian, oh, no. so he's just yeah, he's he doing is. his best American Jade, accent. Jade, where the hell did they get this guy? Because he's awful. Australia. He, uh, he's a very, very nice guy, but he's That's what they all say. They all say that. That's all well, they preface know, it. Well, he's terrible in the film, but he's a really nice guy in real life. Uh, we he, get looked, this. he looked like a, he looked a little bit like a combination between like Sting and Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's like a taller Neil Patrick Harris. You're absolutely right. But my question is, a why didn't guy. they let this guy use his own accent? Why did they have to because make him do this American accent? Because they're in America. There's a lot of Australians in America. Who gives a shit how he got there? Let him use his accent. He's terrible with an American accent. He can't do actually, it. Yeah, actually, I think that was the problem with the narration. You could feel him concentrating on trying to hold the, <laughs> up like the American accent. Jay, was that the problem? Problem? Was he having trouble with it, or is it... absolutely? He he oh. thought he rocked it, and it was horrible. So <laughs> just... did he just listen to a bunch of tapes of Will Arnett, <laughs> and that's how he got to... uh Death Angel zombie makeup around the six minute mark. Looks like uh, the makeup team slapped a mud pack on his face and called it a day. That was the first zombie he comes across in the driving. Is it, like the, the makeup is just flat out I terrible. Like, why does he have a Phantom of the Opera mask? Yeah, why is he? Yeah, <laughs> it's awful. I think what they were going for was like a Sin City thing. Technical note: uh, Was pink the only color available for these transi- transition still scenes? Pink is the worst color you can use in this. It really is a terrible palette for a zombie film. It, why did they use an orange color or any it's, other well, color? Blue. Uh, that was the color of Sin. Or, no, or like, you no, know how it... we could really make a twist? Come on. Instead of red, make it pink. Not what I was hoping for. Uh, how did Chatterbox Hunter, that's what I call him, Chatterbox Hunter, uh, not see the zombie just below the camera frame inside the store? So anyway, he wipes out a zombie on the road. He's the he's the bad Max of this piece, and, he, and, he, and he's traveling in nowhere, and he's all, been all alone for months, and he ends up in some shit old town with another convenience store that you've seen in every other season of The Walking Dead uh, and every other zombie film ever made. Everybody has a convenience store that has, that has a zombie in there. And he goes on a killing spree. Then we have to kill 14 of them. He says, I, could, I said they could be tricky. I never said they were smart. The same line could be applied to the filmmakers uh, as well. You know, <laughs> you know what I thought about at this point? This movie would be hilarious if you did the same narration in Donald Trump's voice. <laughs> it would be hilarious. I said they could be tricky. I never said they could be tricky. <laughs> How could be the only one left? Uh, cue another crappy rock song. The entire soundtrack sounds like it was a demo tape of a local band. That's that because the first couple songs are weekend. by Royal Bliss. Oh, is this who these assholes are? Oh, oh thank. No, this uh, is why like are you giving them a shout out? It. Right, exactly. Never will again. This is it. This feels like what it would be if Nickelback had a visual album. <laughs> <laughs> Jade, you didn't know the band, did you? Oh, I didn't. I've met okay. them once, but I, I, I had nothing to do with... Thank, thank God. Uh, you, you probably met him at the rap party, and they were disappointed uh, when they saw them. <laughs> they probably, probably wishing they could pull their music off the soundtrack at that point. I hope you're getting something, Jade. I paid to rent this movie, so I hope So that did I. I. What was your fee? 2500 on this? It probably wasn't a hell of a lot, I would think. Rude. No, no, I can ask. I, I can, they don't... They, they don't, don't have to ask people how I, much money they I do. I do. Uh, listen to me. I always, always, I always ask if they've been in the movie. I always ask them what they made. They don't have to answer. I but I, oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. So, I, I apologize. I am still confused about the question. Did you just ask me what I made on the movie? Yeah, no, I actually did. No, I, 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 well, let's take a guess now. You don't have to tell. I'm saying about 2500 Is that too low or too oh high? God. What are you doing? Don't even answer. She came, well, she came with her own stripper pole, so probably 3000 I say I give an extra 500 for the stripper pole. Oh my God, 2500 for that. Right. If she did nudity, it would have been higher. It would have been higher. One dollar, Bob. One dollar. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was 
better than that, but I'm not telling you anymore. Okay, so it was high. All right, I did. That's like all. I, said, I scold the five-year-old I Danny <laughs> when he asks about how much he asks about how much they. All right, I just like I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, it's higher. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, it's higher than that. Okay, I got it. All right, we'll keep moving. Jeez, you guys are tough. A new man entered our camp last night. Uh, as if Chatterbox Hunter's crappy voiceover wasn't enough, well, now I have some crappy female voiceover to the mix. Why didn't they just film the table read for this turn and release that? I think that could have saved them a lot of Actually, trouble, that right? Would be awesome. That would have been a much better movie. Why go through all this trouble? Just have to throw a camera up in the room. Did you guys kind of look at each other at any point and go like, "Oh, they did"? <laughs> you know, they did. They realized they what were. In, are we they yeah. knew they were in trouble. What, what the frick are we doing here? Yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> I think we all at one point questioned ourselves as to what the hell we were really doing in a room together and why the hell we were making this movie. But hey, yeah. we did it anyway. Jade, was Danny Trejo in the table read with you or no? Danny Trejo came into the table read uh, halfway through the film. Uh, was he? How long was he on set? Day? Two days? He was on set three days. That was close. Okay, three. That's what I thought. It looks like it looks like three days. But he was barely that's there. That's Danny's style, though. I mean, he. Does, I know. He, he just does shows so up, does it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's all they can afford to pay him, though. You got to remember, they can't yeah, afford to pay him much more. So once they commit to a price, they have to get him out in that time. So they had three days, and that's it. Because uh, that's where most of the budget went. Was his fee? I'm pretty sure. Hey, Jade, how much did Danny Dreho get paid? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll recap the plot real quick. The the Fury Road guy, the mad chatterbox hunter here, gets into uh, somebody shoots him through the windshield as he's driving away from zombies. Obviously, it wasn't a zombie. He gets into a car wreck. He wakes up in this camp, which is like a walking dead camp, where there's a bunch of survivors. He, he's not seen anybody in six months or a year, whatever. And now we got these clowns floating around. Uh, Fast Lane Debbie. Uh, Jade Regear finally shows up around the 60 minute mark, straddling a recovering chatterbox hunter. Comes as no surprise, the director would choose a close up shot of her boomies first. I thought that was classy. That's how they open. That's how you open your your character. <laughs> I don't know if that was an aesthetic choice or yeah, I guess it was. All right, answer my own question. Hey, they look great. No, they you know, I did, but I just always I just hate like why did you do a show? I don't understand why they needed to open with a close up of her boobs. Um, really, well, I, you don't? Well, I do. Oh, are you kidding right now? I, all right, I do. Right, the third 13-year-old inside of you doesn't understand why there was a booby cam in this film. <laughs> yeah. Nice to know you can still get hoop earrings after the zombie apocalypse happens. I thought that was, oh, my I thought, God. I thought your I'm earrings sorry. were awesome, Jade. I'm sorry. I wanted those earrings. Where did she get those? You're I not, want those. I don't rock them, but I still have them. Are you really? Oh, oh shit. Those are awesome. That, that's, pretty, that's a bad sign, though, that when, you're, when your costume choices are, are distracting from what's going on, like when you're paying attention to that kind of shit, you know your film sucks at well, that point. Well, I, I used to have ones that looked a lot like that, <laughs> and then and they broke, and I was really sad. So I was like, oh, those are awesome. And what burned-out factory was this scene shot? Jade, where was this film? Where were you guys filming? Uh, we filmed... A lot of it in Harriman uh, slash Path Provo, Utah. And then we also filmed the end in Wendover, Utah. Something on your mind, Debbie? Uh, every one of Rieger's shots looks like she just came off a photo shoot for Car and Driver magazine at the 18-minute mark. Man, you're posing a lot in this. I mean, I granted, I guess that's that was the direction that you were given. But uh, everything Boy. you're like, you're like backlit. You look like Megan Fox, just Honor, a little her dirtier. Her character refers to herself in the third person. Only. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, was that? I guess that was kind of a given, huh? They just told but you. But that's this. the thing. She actually played like a character. Yeah, she does. Like, she does. That thing literally was a character that, in all situations, posed like she was it, and that was how I was supposed to play it. Like a spoiler alert: even when you died, you were like still posing like you were it, and I feel yeah. like that was that was intentional. <laughs> it was all intentional. Uh, calling Danny Trejo Jesus is like calling Richard Simmons machete. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> come on. It's such a, it's a shitty name to call him. All right, so a thumbs up from Jay. Thank you. At least our guest liked it. I had to give you at least one since every other one you've been paid for at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, she's actually pretty good at this uh, this uh, podcasting she's stuff. She's spicy. Know. You need uh, how's the gringo? Uh, Trejo looks like he uh, was shot separately from the other actors, uh, which makes sense to say can only afford him for 10 minutes while he was on his way to a better paying gig. 20 minute mark. Uh, that scene inside the, the bunker inside where you had the dinner scene, he was shot separately. Am I correct, Jade? He wasn't there for most of that because he no, said he was there. For he was? He was there. Yes, for the whole, you, see no. him, you see him at different oh, angles. No, 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 there. you don't. If you go back and look at it, you see him from the one angle of him in the chair and he only, there's only one other actor in that frame. It's a fat guy that's in that frame with him. That's it. In that scene, he's that's just it's a, it's a medium shot on him. That's why I thought he was shot separately. But apparently, so why then? That's a director problem. If he didn't, why didn't he shoot a master that, shot? We had three cameras in the room at the time, 
and it was shot separately from seven different angles, I swear. But the fat guy was sitting next to me, right. and Trejo was two down from me and at the head of the table. Right, but there wasn't a master Where, shot of him at the head of the table and the rest of you guys, what I'm saying. So when they broke it up, when they edited it, it looks like he was shot separately from all you guys. Honestly, at this point, when we see the rest of the people in the film, I'm just going to say it. The two scariest people in the movie for me are Jake Swayzo, who plays Lyle, and yep. creepy McCreeperson, Jason, who plays Ricky. Jason Wixom is one of the cutest, sweetest guys I've ever met in my life. Aww. And I'll tell you a cute thing about him later. But, yeah, totally creepy. He could be Lucas Haas's little brother. Yeah, he was like a Lucas Haas type character. And then there's but always... the other guy, Jake. That yeah, there's guy always a fat like... guy. There's always a so... fat guy. Fat, disgusting guy in these movies. And, of course, you have to... It's all like stock characters, guys. Except for Jade here, which she's kind of stock, too. But we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, was anyone else asking for a shirtless machete zombie killing scene set against the pink filter with ear splitting techno music? Trail yeah. looks like he just got like he's oh just. Oh my god! Why else is I, I hate. Trail? I was like. Yeah, but Trail looks like he's whacking out zombie breast cancer at the twenty-one minute mark. It's a terrible yeah. scene, guys. Come on, really? Was anybody really like that? That, that throws you out of the movie completely. Like, what is he doing? I then, liked it. Jade, you weren't around for that scene, were you? I was present. I was actually working on the truck for the, <laughs> in that scene. You were actually fixing and it? You were fixing it so well, they can move the camera equipment? No. The, I was working on the truck so the truck would finish its scene. That whole scene was shot during the daytime. Yeah, and it's a day for night. And they ended up having to filter it out and yep. make it look ridiculous. Yeah, it's that's, a, that's a, it's called it's day for night. It's a process. And then they throw that stupid pink fucking filter on. It looks even worse. I know he looks terrible in scene. I don't know. You guys liked that. I thought it was terrible, terrible. Like it's really embarrassment yeah. to him. And I like Danny Trejo a lot. Don't get me. I'm not trying to bag like, on him. It was a girly version. It, of <laughs> it was like a Powerpuff <laughs> Girls. It was, it was a Powerpuff yeah. Girls. Yeah, that's the problem. These are the directors that don't know what they're doing, and they try different stuff, and they're trying to put everything into the film, and it's not working. They don't pick a, a tone, a correct tone for the film when they start shooting, and they just start layering on stuff because when they get it in post and you start looking at it, it doesn't – like if you saw that stuff without the filters and the music, it lo it's going to look kind of lame. It's, and it's shot in the daytime like Jay just said. It's not going to look right. So then they start at the layering. You have to start at the layering stuff on it and hope you come up with something decent instead of having a clear definition of what you want to do to begin with. Uh, and that's what it looks like. It's just I think amateur just hour. Pick the pink filter because it's one color, and so it's easier to render. <laughs> okay. So it would take less time in post than like a like a sunsetty kind of thing with multiple colors and all that kind of stuff. All right. You the asshole that shot me? Uh, hey, how did Horatio Sands guy get in this turn at the twenty three minute mark? That was my cheap shot. At the oh, fat guy. He is kind of Horatio. Yeah. Oh, come on. He's, he's totally no. funny. This guy's not funny. No, he he's not funny at all. But he, no, he does look like him. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 no, there are many actors I thought of, but Hurry Shield did not want to. Come on, no. that was a total. That was for grip. That was first episode. of all. I didn't like this guy from the get when he's dragging. No, he's an know, asshole. Hunter, I and know. he spits his chaw on his face. That's just disgusting. <laughs> That's just him on a normal day, though. Can't even answer that one. That was okay. <laughs> he got nothing on that. that. Okay. Gross, right? It's, it's pretty bad when the when the actress has nothing on that shit. It's yeah, he's gross from the get go. Uh, there's a little town south of here. Uh, Trejo couldn't look uh, more bored reciting his lame expositional dialogue uh, sitting in that chair if he tried. He really had to rip off a lot of stupid dialogue, and he just obviously didn't want to be there. I mean, I, he's getting paid. He does his three days and gets the hell out of there, but uh, it's a terrible scene. Okay, like, um, like any of them weren't in the same boat? Well, I don't, I don't know. Were... Some, some people had a better time on this shoot than others, right, Jade? I well, guess. that doesn't mean that they were like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Well, no, he can, though, because he's done a million different... Pro this is just a paycheck, guys. Yeah, he guys. was getting paid a lot more. Yeah, it's a boat payment. That's all this is for him, all right? He's got to pay his taxes or something. He's only right. been in more movies than any actor on He has. Earth. He has yeah. been... Well, I don't know if any actor on Earth. Now, we, we've yes, had a couple... I don't think he's I've, I've taco had... place in Los Angeles. All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Did he really? Tacos. That's yeah, awesome. Tacos look, I'm not going to... Look, I, I love Danny Trey. I don't... Because we had Maria Olsen. She's been in over 150 films. I don't know if he's done more than that. Uh, 324. 324? Yeah, because he said, he's like, I don't say no because I yeah. feel so yeah. grateful that I am in this position where people are asking me to Aww. do this. He's a very downhearted, he's to earth, and he's very appreciative of the position he's in. He's a very beautiful individual. Uh, doesn't taste like shit for once. Uh, unlike this insanely long eight-minute dinner scene, which could have been done in four minutes. Way too long. First of all, what was Claire cooking? Okay, it was horrible. <laughs> it was uh, beans, uh -huh. a hot dog that had been cut up, <laughs> and some sauerkraut of some kind Ew. that came out of a can. Yeah, I, she was like, oh, 
It's her favorite. And then it cut to like her cooking hot dogs, half of which were raw and half of which were charred beyond recognition. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know. This is the craft services for the film, right? This is basically what you're reading for the entire shoot. Like, all right, guys, we're done filming. That's this is your lunch break. Enjoy. That could have been a good joke. Because all I could think of was, God, those are charred wieners. I know. <laughs> uh, believe in good and evil, or just evil if you're watching this turd. All right, hey, oh, let's keep you up there. Uh, and then the next one follow up to that is sounds cold and empty, just like this film. Hey, oh, I got two. Yeah, two right there, two rim shots on that one. Uh, consumed by hate, that one is. Trejo so bored, he starts talking like Machete Yoda. <laughs> That's that very true. That was very true. He started. He just. He just couldn't get. I couldn't get the hell out of that plane fast enough. All right, I'm just gonna do Yoda, and I'm out. He literally had to re-record that. Like, Did he really? <laughs> See, because he was doing Yoda. Wasn't that far oh off? Oh my god! Now? You are you. You, oh, Danny Trejo, both had the force. <laughs> you never see the fear in their eyes, uh, which comes as no surprise since their entire face is covered in dried oatmeal. 34 minute mark. All the zombies. They're dead. They're they have nothing in their eyes because they're dead. Well, also the makeup is just so bad. Literally, the makeup is literally Halloween store makeup. I don't know who the makeup people were on this shoot. They couldn't do a convincing zombie makeup. They can't do blood effects. They can't. Everything had to be covered with CGI and a pink filter. That's bad, guys. I'll, it's I'll a zombie honest. film, guys. Come I'll on. be honest. I would not have a problem with bad makeup or cgi or whatever as long as there's like established rules of zombies again there's no canon on what kills a zombie in this that film too. that's another problem. and also why do they explode <laughs> <laughs> my issue was zombie abilities to answer your makeup question please well, I've been reading, I've been apparently the special much. effects makeup person was Corey gregerson all right Corey, you suck i hope you're in a different oh, line of business at this point not in the fun way uh, hey, how did that Resident Evil crappy CGI monster get in this film around the 36 minute mark? So, in addition to everything else, we gotta rip off another movie. Uh, do you think you can teach me how to be a badass too? Uh, no, well, we're gonna stop the film uh, stone cold so uh, Rieger can get a stripper pole workout in around the 37 minute mark. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> First of all, Jay, were you required to bring your own stripper pole to the set? No, actually, that was <laughs> for me was built into a warehouse and they had to reinforce the ceiling, the floor and four walls so that it wouldn't break because of my move. That's a fucking badass move. And, and, and she, I've, I've got to say, when I was watching this, I was like, you know what? That's what Jennifer Aniston was trying to do. And we're the Millers. Yeah, oh, that's right. And that warehouse scene. <laughs> but that's I what I thought when I was watching it. I was like, that's what Aniston thing. That's what she wishes she was doing. How much yeah. of that stripper pole did you shoot? Because it would seem like it was cut short. It seemed like there wasn't enough of the stripper pole. So, like, you did a couple <laughs> moves. No, I'm not doing that. First of all, I said it was the equivalent of having, like, a zombie attack scene in Showgirls, if you want to go ahead to that. But Oh, that would be awesome. That Showgirls <laughs> with zombie? I would that do. movie would be, I would watch the shit out of that movie. <laughs> Maybe okay. I, uh, I'd be in that movie. You totally. Be. So, how much did they shoot? Like, how did you do the full routine and then just cut it down, or did you just do a couple I, moves? I did a couple of moves about twelve to thirteen times, but they stuck with one particular move that they liked best, and Ooh. that was just the twirl. Oh, and honestly, twirl. probably the least of my favorite, but it uh, worked out best in the film. Uh, okay, if you say so. Um, I, I thought I could, it was badass. I couldn't. I do don't. That. I think it was just completely like out of in out my of the entire life. I look. Regardless of that, I think it was completely. It shouldn't have been in the film at all because I think it's completely out of place for the movie. Completely. And literally, you have to stop no, it's the film. Not, not yes, it is. The line of the film. Yes, it is. You have. You, have, you can't throw. A no, it's pole. not. First of all, <laughs> these two women have been cooped up. One of whom with her brother, with Danny Ew. Trejo, with you know, <laughs> fat white, fat Albert. And, and and with and Lucas the old Hobbs guy who apparently pretty, pretty always cool avoids brother. getting killed, like he's just randomly in and out of the scenes. So some guy who's decently looking comes along, and of course we have a battle between the two girls on you know who's going to get him. Yeah, but and super pole one guys. of them has supreme athletic skills that yeah. happen to involve sexy dancing. I'm not saying she wasn't so talented in the scene. I just said it was in a pro- I thought it was out of place for the film. I granted yeah. she. She's uh, the character is hard up to. We have to exploding sleep zombies. There's nothing uh, else. I, I know, I know. All right, all right. So how long did I take to film, Jade? I guess I got. I guess for all everybody who's uh, like tuning in for the stripper pole routine, this is it, guys. It, it actually only took about forty minutes. That's the it? backstory on that is that I was a stripper in my previous life, at least for right. them. 
somehow. <laughs> I don't know how that makes any sense. That, well, and you know what I liked is that when you realized it, that people were seeing your boobs who didn't want to, see, you didn't want them to see your boobs. You were like, ew, no. Uh, did they ask no. you to do nudity, uh, Jade, or no? It was asked of me, yes. And you and then you turned it. Okay, so they were okay with you. I guess. Well, I guess there were. There's no nudity in the film at all. Uh, usually in these type of films, these, these really grindhousey type of films, there is nudity. I was actually surprised that there wasn't any. I really expected it from you. As soon as, like I said, I expected uh, she's gonna, at least going to be topless for most of this. And I was really surprised that she wasn't. They did consider doing nudity in the entire film. They did consider doing a couple of other scenes, which I won't lead into, nude or topless as well. But uh, in the end, they chose to go with a, a little bit lesser of the two evils. And also based on my decision to not go topless in that scene because it would have made the rest of the uh, gratuitousness not as exciting. Is this your first time <laughs> too? Uh, Chatterbox Hunter and the good girl sex scene looks uh, like a dramatic recreation of how a college rape uh, in the early 90s would go down. Uh, no means no, guys. 40 minute mark on that one. It's a little rapey. Are, what? Yeah, it she's, is. She's you straddling so? him with her legs. No, no, what? the other way. No, I'm talking when he throws her down on the bed. I'm not talking that that shit. Um, it she just looks is at... the one that takes the bottle out of his hand and throws it away and is like, hi, I'm yeah, taking my Yeah, but she's drunk. That's because she's drunk. She she's know what not she's doing. drunk. She mm. took a drink for courage. She's no, not drunk. No, she was. No, she was drunk. Yeah, she was drunk. But it's she a little rapey. She was not drunk. She wasn't drunk. She was like, I'm freaked out because I've never done this before. They always go with the lesser attractive woman in these films. I don't understand why. And I'm not <laughs> one. I mean, oh, I, just, I don't know. Because I thought what? he, because uh, I just thought you he would have, he would have. beautiful women in this movie. Why do you have, why, why is that I, always it, the thing? If there's no, two because, women in something, because, one has to be more attractive than the other. Well, right? one is, one is more attractive. No, actually, I thought he no, would have went I, for his I, tasting. I, I get what, you, no, actually, Honor, I agree. And I get what you're saying. One of the tropes is that the virginal one is always considered the quote unquote more attractive one. Right. But clearly Jade is I, obviously the more overtly sexual and attractive woman in this film. Of the two women in this film, she is. And naturally, he would just, as an alpha male guy, and he's a real dude, he's a drinking and fucking running over know. zombies, dude. It's, he would have went for her. He would have fucked her. That I don't was... think he's an alpha male, though. And I think I'm on the girl's side. I cool. like women. I happen to think she's a very beautiful girl. No, she is. I'm and... just saying. I'm just saying of the two, though, within context of the film, I'm just saying of the two actresses, character-wise, he would have went for Fastlane Debbie over right. this one. That's all I'm saying. I'm but, not, I'm, but I'm saying real life, it's, it's a different... trope. It's a trope that the virginal one is always considered the more attractive one. Yes, it is a trope. Because right. of the national thought of, yes, she's going to be more attractive. She hasn't been there. She hasn't done that. And so I agree with that. Um, I appreciate the nod towards my direction. Oh no, no, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm just, I'm just, uh, stand, I'm just looking, just like this. Come on now, don't get crazy. I'm just, just looking. It's a purely I aesthetic, Honestly, aesthetic I th I thing from the film. Dodged a bullet Dramatically wise. The next scene shows us she. Dodged uh, yeah. First of all, yeah, yeah. who keeps? How did he get his pants she off deserves, and keep his boots deserves, on? Yeah, she yeah. deserves better. His pants are still on with his boots. <laughs> and it's great. That's what Hilarious. I knew too. That's I was like, awesome. those are buttoned. Uh, I still think uh, in that scene, she does dialogue afterwards uh, in the diary or prior to that, that she knew that she wanted to sexually be with him. So, yeah, no, yeah. I know, I know. Right. That's what I'm saying. No, okay. she drank and got stupid and dumb before <laughs> she went and got with him. His feet just kind of like went up and down, but he didn't move. And then she goes, I could tell he knew what he was doing. He didn't do anything. Yeah, he sucked. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> I've been uh, wanting to do this for a long time. Well, if you ever wanted to see Horatio Sands get eaten by a zombie, you're welcome. 43-minute mark on that one. Uh, I was so happy was... when he died because oh, yeah, I he was does die. fearful Thank God. for you. Zombies. In that scene. Yeah. Well, and then, <laughs> like, the, the zombies at this... Happen. Right, while the sex scene's yeah. going on, right, the zombies uh, kind of break into this compound finally, and uh, Horatio Sands is the first to get it. And, of course, because Horatio Sands is finally... See, her character, Jade, because she couldn't get laid by the the, road, the Mad Max guy, the Chatterbox Hunter guy, so she, she really defaults to the fat guy, uh, which is a horrible scene to begin with. But I'm like, all right, at this point, you're going to kind of roll with anything. And just as that, he's about to get laid by Fastlane Debbie here, uh, a zombie comes in and just punches a hole in his gut, and that was the end of him. Uh, and then Rieger keeps screaming like they took away her stripper pole. <laughs> You're screaming a lot. You're screaming a lot in that scene. You're, you overshot your mark, I think, on, on screaming. I guess they just told you to keep screaming till they yell cut. They did. <laughs> See, I know. See, is that, I'm not that far off on a lot of this, guys. I'm telling you. They literally did it in front of me. Oh, and I did not. 
expect it, and it really did creep me out. <laughs> so, it, oh, so they did it like live. I love those live effects, effects. right? Yeah. Live effect, and uh, it did like come through his chest through a person I happen to have feelings for because he is a friend. Aww. So when it came through his chest, it freaked me out. I really didn't know it was coming, and uh, yeah, you were screaming a lot. That, yeah, no shit. <laughs> Uh, he tried to kill me. Eh, we're just, uh, we'll just day for night this scene because we sure as hell can't afford any lights. <laughs> so the scene after that is day for night. Uh, again, it costs a lot to shoot at night. And so. I to do my pants up while running, and the funny oh boy, part is go. my pants were already, like, half done. Uh, it's, oh, what really? pants? You're in shorts. You're in the same shitty shorts you've been wearing since day one. Exactly! <laughs> and the whole time I tried to pull them up and do them back up, and they shot half the scene with me doing my pants up and then shoot the rest of the scene while I'm outside doing the same part of my pants up. <laughs> Cause it really wouldn't take that long. It's I mean, a, there's like it's one short. button. In yeah. Zipper, it's just one. Right? Yeah. You're I mean, a size zero. Like it's one, it's like two buttons, right? Maybe a zipper. You're right. Maybe a zipper on that one. Nobody laughs at Allison. Uh, no, but we are laughing at that day glow CGI fluid. You keep throwing on the camera lens. Uh, Allison looks like she's killing one of the fraggles at the 46 minute mark. <laughs> what is Did going again? You? Chris, that's Unset? what I've been talking about. What is with the choices on these color schemes? They're terrible. They're not consistent across the board. If they were all no, the blood is either pink, yeah, black, or, black or, or red. red. Yeah. It's ridiculous guys. This is just like, just throw anything at the wall. Like we do every week here in the restroom. Just throw all the jokes against the restroom stall, whatever. <laughs> sticks is we're gonna keep and that's exactly what happens with this film they got into the editing bay and went ape did shit they, did they tell you uh. on set why they were choosing different colors of blood at different no points? no that's all post i didn't tell they didn't tell Jay no shit. no i'm talking they, about the practical effects on set where people were getting covered with it on their face now that was that toxic blood that she's probably got cancer from now after never having that on her skin for 20 days there was a lot of blood on set and all blood on set was actually closer to red or a dark brown okay. something that was more similar to blood but after that, I do not understand the color choices <laughs> at all as to why they, like, flew off the wall or, like, Oh, it's out of control. Purple. Yeah. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, exactly what I say when the CGI Resident Evil monster shows up again. <laughs> And we're now going to repeat the machete zombie killing scene from earlier, but with a different filter this time, 48 minute mark. That's when machete, uh, they all have to escape the compound. They have to get into a shitty pickup truck. And as they're doing that, machete is going to like, just one man against this CGI monster. And it's got a filter. He's not wearing a damn shirt again. Uh, this is all filmed at the same time. And how come there was no explanation of where this fucking thing came from or how it came to be no, or no, anything? Nothing. Just random. Well, I thought they said it was like from a drug addiction. They have no description. There's no description. <laughs> Literally just shows up. All of a sudden, we're like, we're in the building with what? And uh, he's from where? Oh, my God. So oh my God. Really? That's crazy. That, that's ridiculous. Yeah, after you. Really? That's okay. all they said? It was 20 feet tall, and you got it. they didn't even give you, like, a uh, tennis ball on top of a pole or something so you can get an eye line correctly? They didn't even give us an eye line set. Oh, my so, God. Wow. Really? It, it, God. All right, that explains a lot, guys. All right, see, you're learning, folks. You're learning. Uh, get out of here. Uh, I need to kill this CGI creature ASAP because I have an early call and another film tomorrow. 50-minute mark. That was it for Danny what? Trejo. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to get killed, and then I'm, I'm on a plane. Is that how it happened, Jay? Did it literally just rush into the airport right after the scene was wrapped? Uh, after that scene wrapped, yeah, he was in the car. And... <laughs> they literally had the limo yeah, running. Did. They had the car running right next to the camera. So no, no, he he ran to the car with his prayer hands. Oh, you did. <laughs> I know, right? He gets his head ripped off. Right. And that's what my husband said. He couldn't look away from this movie. No. I'm watching it in the office, and he's like, he's praying. Prayer right hands, with yeah. His head off. And then he ran to his limo and got the hell out of fucking Utah. After he finished his yes, set, go ahead. No, yeah, want, tell us what happens. Go ahead. He did want to sit down. He had a little bit of supper with everybody Aww. before we all left. Uh, we ate something, and then uh, we did a little talk afterwards, and then he was on. Okay, so it wasn't that much longer. So we were too that far off. But again, I can't really bag on Trejo because, like I said, the guy's done 324 films. He's an amazing guy. Uh, and obviously, he's a really just as a good, he's a good human being. And I think that's what's probably the most important thing to take away from shitty movies like this is uh, sometimes the people are just really good people who just want to work. And uh, sometimes they just, you know, yeah, that's, that's what happens. And that's, that's, that's why we're glad we have a guest here because we just would have been bagging on the whole thing, not knowing the behind the scenes of Danny Trejo's pretty good guy right before he jumps into a limbo to fly off to another movie. Uh, a few gunshot wounds. Chatterbox Hunter gets to narrate his dialogue instead of actually speaking to the characters standing around him. 
Uh, I thought he was telepathic. That's a, do you notice that? There's that one scene around the truck, and everybody's talking out loud except him, and it's, but his scenes is all narration. Like, what the fuck? Did they shout the it's dialogue? It's so weird. It is fucking weird because I'm tired of hearing him talk, and he's talking for the whole thing. More than me right now. Ugh. Yeah, you're right. All <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for confirming that. It, right, yeah, you're not helping. You're really not helping. Yeah, all right. They were actually Go ahead. concerned about the conversation between Claire and I than they were between anybody else and the rest of the conversation. I'm like, you guys are missing like half the freaking script here. What the hell is going on? That's actually yeah, it, my next line. Yeah. Uh, ladies, are we done? Okay. I certainly hope so considering how bad the acting is between the two female leads. Uh, 53 minute mark. Sorry, Jade. Uh, that chick fight scene. Uh, not that great. A whole film plays like an acting exercise at a local improv class. They messed this up. The scene was actually would have been sold much better had they sold it the way it was originally shot. She looks back and I can see her kissing him and they've been making out the whole time and whatnot. And I say to her, I'm not, you know, a skank, blah, 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 like your sister. And right after that scene, I lean over and I kiss Jason Wixom, like totally deep throat him and make Whoa. him totally. How do we miss this? Whoa. Oh, hey. <laughs> Damn. But it the scene, which would have made it perfect. Okay. There's a lot, a lot of deep throating for nothing, Jane. I know, right? <laughs> even better than that. And uh, I feel a little bit horrible about saying this. This is that poor, cute boy's first kiss ever in his life. Oh, no! Was it really? Oh, that's adorable. How old was he when you guys did this? I don't know how 12? old. 12? No. <laughs> 21. See, I would, if I was 21, man, that would be awesome. That would have been, yeah. would have changed my and whole that, life, Jane. And that boy grew up to be Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did not have anybody like Jade kissing me at 21, believe me. Um, Neither it was, did I. <laughs> it, it, it was basically my own hand or a mirror kissing me at 21, but that's a, that's a, that's a whole separate story, kids. Uh, what is it? Four characters throwing up simultaneously around the 59-minute mark is a great reaction of okay, how moviegoers reacted after that watching this film. Porn or yeah, what? what were you guys puking, Jade? Two characters really did throw up. Ooh, oh, Jesus, wow. really? It was not fun. Oh, so yeah. we mixed cream corn, baked beans, something, oh. sauerkraut. Uh, <laughs> it was like cream spinach. Or yeah, something. Oh, God, just, I would have yeah, thrown it. I would have thrown it up. I would have thrown it Threw all in a cup and stirred it. Oh. And as soon as you put it in your mouth, it was like, Ew. whoa. And you're no. in the desert, right? So it's like, where did where was that filmed? Oh, it was in, in Utah. Utah right? right? So it's like hot. And, yeah. oh. People in over and we were at the uh abandoned air base so that's where the food actually came from was that right. or yeah the thought in the no film. way so it really was like living Ew. like it was like method acting so to recap the plot real quick uh they have to escape the compound they're in a truck they they have to get make it to an air force base which has a plane that's getting the hell out of here and they stop at the town and now when they stop at this town uh, they include, uh, they found a dead body, and this is the puking, the cream corn puking that we, uh, an actual puking uh, at the 59-minute mark. Uh, it's awesome, guys. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, you going to say even say anything before you just walk off? Got to hope not. Uh, hasn't Chatterbox Hunter said enough already? But I'm going there's that one. Don't, uh, don't worry about me, sugar tits. Uh, Mel Gibson called. He'd like his sexist comment back. Um, you know what? I actually Googled <laughs> Sugar Tits just to see because oh, I was no. like, I know this is from another movie. It's like in 20 movies. <laughs> is it really? Oh, don't, Gibson could have got someone him. Sugar Tits. Okay, so that's not a new one. All right. So which no. one did he watch? Super yeah. bad. <laughs> I, I'm going to say they this got one. it from Super Bad. Oh, uh, maybe he got it from Super Bad. Okay. Uh, this is not the way to get laid. Uh, it's also not the way uh, to make a decent zombie film, but uh, we'll throw a chainsaw wheeling maniac in it anyway at the hour and five minute mark. Why is there a clown guy with a chainsaw at this point? A human. Oh, my gosh. Originally, it was another uh, gentleman that would to, was to be that particular film. But we found out that he was a creepo, and this is <laughs> really going to Oh, my God. <laughs> no shit. So one of the photos you actually see of me in the background having my hair pulled and dragged off into the desert is of this creepo. And oh. the reason why... Oh, yeah, this gets even weirder. Uh, the reason why we're doing the pictures to uh, set up the movie, and all of a sudden this guy comes up and says, "Hey, we, you and I are supposed to work together." And I said, "Okay, great. You know what? What's our role for the photography? What What are we doing?" And he says, "I'm supposed to pull your hair 
uh, because I'm pulling you off into the sunset. And I was like, okay, we can do that. And uh, I find out later that this guy, A, was not on the set at <laughs> all. Oh, my B, God. You oh were God. supposed to be part of the photography. Oh. And they were supposed to be a zombie in the background. It had nothing to do with the actual photography or the movie set that we were actually doing at that day. He had shown up on a random day and given me a story and I apparently thought that that was real because they said he was a zombie and he was a clown. Holy so then cow. they had a clown dude in the scene because he freaked me out so bad, obviously. So they used the clown in the scene and he ends up being the guy that kills No me, shit. Which, oh my wow, God. Wow, that's a great story. Oh, well, there you no, go, folks. That's, that's really, that's also really It's scary. Up. Yeah, that's really fucked no, up. No, it's fucked up. It's <laughs> fucked up. That's fucked up that they had, like, no security anywhere on this set. <laughs> well, what do you, dude, it's a $20 budget. I don't, Come I, on. Don't no, I don't care. I don't care. care. Like, no. that, you pay some that fucking that mean, security like, guard that, and donuts and get them on the set. No, that. it doesn't work like that in these low budget guys. They're in the middle of no, nowhere. No, but they use that. That's I'm just glad that this story has a happy ending and nothing terrible happened to you. So, the gentleman that actually does play... The clown that kills me is a Marine, and he does acting on the side, and he was a partner to a very, very good friend of mine, uh, and as he returned home, he had just returned home to his family, that he found out about this role, found out I was in it, and wanted to come play uh, with me, so I called and made a phone call, he came in, and he ended up being the actor that played the actual clown that the actual funny me. man hey. much happier it. yeah it's a little happy ending so but he, yeah what... so he played the did he play it the whole time yes he played except for that one shot except for that one shot he was really good uh, he I was don't... scary that guy uh, he was shit. yeah well he was yeah about no, as good as... he was good he was like fucked right. up and scary Jade's uh, chainsaw death around the hour and six minute mark would have been far more impressive if it wasn't obscured by a shitload of cgi blood on the camera lens uh, did the filmmakers get a good discount on this effect? I mean, it appears more in this film than Danny Trejo. Hey-oh! Oh, oh, that, I... was, uh, that was funny. No, I did. <laughs> more blood on me than I can even possibly imagine. Yeah, but you couldn't I, see I, any I of it, Jay. That's the problem. There's so many CGI things. The filter in front, you can't see your death. Which... God. But can I ask a question? During the death scene, were you fixing your hair as you were being impaled? <laughs> uh, the sets... We're trying to fix it to make it look like it was uh, consistent, but uh -huh. I never touched it. Oh, okay. I had okay. to in the spot because if I moved, the blood on the wall behind me would not have been consistent. So I actually uh... couldn't move. I had to take my shorts off. Oh, Jesus. And I had to take my boots off in order to even shoot this. Oh, my God. Because if I got shoes, because my boots are three hundred dollar boots, and wow. my sh my pants what my sh custom cut, and if I would have got blood on them, I never would have been able to finish shooting around the rest of the scene. Right. So I had to take everything off, and then to shoot the rest of the scene, the makeup artist went with me to the hotel room to try and scrub pink and red off of me from of your next shorts uh, oh, oh my, oh my god. god that's insane like why well, another half-ass production jesus christ there, there's ways you, this could have been avoided well you know body. that reminds me of like Ugh. that um uh that Great story. food coloring that cake decorating food coloring paste yeah it makes me feel like that's what they used on yeah. her because that yeah, shit man. never comes out it just doesn't and it was all <laughs> on my body oh it my was god. literally that's and, awesome. and in places that I had to seriously remove or yeah, it exactly. Shown. yeah exactly. I will say, like, even cut in half, your abs were amazing. No, no, she looked yeah. no, not, uh, yeah, even cut, yeah, even even just dis disemboweled, she looked great. Okay, we know. Uh, you're not so funny now, are you, funny man? I should do this in this line. You're not so funny now, are you, funny man? Chatterbox Hunter keeps talking to these zombies like he's Clint Eastwood talking to that chair. The hour and nine minute mark. I don't understand. <laughs> Find the voice, and then he kills the, he kills the clown guy we've been talking about for you know the last uh, couple minutes here. Uh, there's not the juggalo. A lot... Yeah, the juggalo, right? There's not a lot in my past I'm proud of, uh, <laughs> nor do we want to hear about. But unfortunately, we're gonna have to endure just to fill out the running time in an, uh, an hour and twelve minute mark. 
now they're getting away and there's only what two or three left at this point right there's the the fury road guy there's the the virgin who's deflowered uh claire and then uh, there's some other clown uh not that clown though. see i would have thought honestly in if we're just going by horror movie rules that jade's character would have lived and claire's character would have died because she's the one that had sex in the movie that's automatic death right for any female character and that's then they flipped it anyone want to hazard a guess what happened to the other two actors in the back of the truck during this endless monologue did you guys notice that? They the, weren't there. Yeah, they two, two disappeared mm-hmm. and then they Why reappeared. Why not in the shot? They, I know, they would have been in the shot and then they reappeared at the end of the shot, which yeah, is that's what I was, I was fucking like, shitty yeah, filmmaking. I <sighs> could not stop laughing because exactly. they literally were the they were. whole filming and I don't know how they got out of the truck. <laughs> Where did they go? <laughs> there's a four minute monologue sequence between uh, the Fury Road guy and Chatterbox Hunter and the Deflower version and there's, it's, it's, a, it's a two shot of them looking through the window of the truck. But you can clearly see to the back of the pickup truck where the other two actors are supposed to be. And But you don't see them. They're not there. And they're, it's a rear projection thing. And then when they actually get to the location, they they hop out of the back of the truck. Where the fuck were they? And the is, they were there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's because they're sitting up on the thing. And I don't know. I, I guess no, they would have been in the shot. It. They would have been in the shot. You can't not. I don't know. It's, it's a small so truck. Weird. Come on, Chris. It's just continuity error. Yeah. It's a huge continuity error, and there's no excuse for that shit. Uh, she ain't much, but this airplane is in excellent condition despite a zombie apocalypse. Sure, the hour and 16-minute mark. So they make it to the airfield, folks, despite uh, continuity errors and everything else, and they find a perfectly intact twin-engine plane. It's a very oh, small real plane. Real quick, real quick, another yes. line. You should have uh, had a drink every time, and how the hell did this movie not get sued? I'm getting too old for this shit. Yeah, there is that line. You're right. You're right. There's oh, the Dan like, Glover. No, like at least three times. There's so many yeah. lines from other movies. Did you notice that, Jade, when you watched it? Absolutely. Yeah, see, Absolutely. Uh, at that point, she, she just took her, her $3,000, $3,500 and went home. Uh, <laughs> she took <laughs> the rip off of the lines as they were in any Disney she, animated film. She took the check and her stripper pole and she went home. Fuck it. Uh, we don't have much no, time. No, no. <laughs> you know what? I am sure if she does have a pole, I'm sure it's nicer than the one they provide. I bet it is. I bet her stripper pole is really nice. <laughs> Uh, we don't have much time. Uh, thankfully, yes, since there's only 10 minutes left in the running time. You're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Uh, nobody messes with Allison. Not even poorly rendered CGI creatures. Hour and 24 minute mark. I guess Allison kicks him a little ass there. Why was that like the weakest sauce, like acceleration thing? Like, I, I you know, know, she doesn't even punch it. It's like, <laughs> like, hitting the accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> If you're in the market for a crappy CGI explosion, look no further than the hour and 26 minute mark. I'm telling you right now, I was watching this in the office next to my husband who's actually trying to animate a book right now for someone, and he could not take his eyes off of this terrible <laughs> stuff. I mean, he was peeing. It's he ter- was laughing yeah, so was. hard. It's it was so bad. Inspiring. That's terrible. <laughs> Even, okay, Jade, it's all right. Just, I love your laugh. Jay, Jade's ripping <laughs> back there. She's having fun in that basement. Uh, even though the future is uncertain, uh, dot, 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 we'll be rip off the ending to the Terminator, uh, cause you'll probably you be something? too drunk to I, display This is remember. what creeped me out. And this is why I uh, said to my husband, I was like, okay, so now the last two pieces, people who are alive, who are humanity are a brother and sister. So Ew. they're expected to repopulate the earth. Well, it you gotta do what you gotta do. Story? It, no, it worked on Game of Thrones. I know, that's but then true. my husband said, oh no, she's pregnant from the other guy. Oh, that's true. Who, by the way, isn't dead. Yeah. No, well, he's dead now. He's dead. Oh, well, hold on. That's my next yeah. line. Uh, how uh, how I was still breathing, I don't know. And talking. Uh, if you want to get the job done, you got to do it yourself. Uh, blown up. He looked like he was having a spa day. I know, I know. Like, he got, I know. And if then he, he kills himself, and then he cuts well, hold his own on. throat. I know. Well, that's why I said, if you want to get the job done, you got to do it yourself. That's the line. Why didn't Chatterbox Hunter just kill himself at the beginning of this herd? Asparagus is a horrible because line he delivery. Was fueled by rage. Oh, come on, but, really? But my real question is, and this is an honest question about the plot line of uh. the movie. You know, he reveals to the character, Allison, that, you know, he got drunk and then he got fucked up on the drug. And then he went home the next day and his wife and his daughter were all, you know, fucked up. And he said that's the first time he saw one of the eaters but my real question was did he temporarily turn into one of these things and wow. murder his own family and then like his penance is to like kill all of these Who, things to, really you're really gonna like pull the yes, shit out there who a gives a sh- nobody gives a shit okay uh and credit all right well you can ask the question you can work out you can work that out 
uh, with Jade later on. Uh, end credits look like a crappy 80s video uh, from a techno British band. Uh, sadly, there's a, they're actually more entertaining than the previous 90 minutes. I, I have to say, the credits were better than any of the effects in the, the movie. The credits were awesome. The end credits were fantastic. Uh, I wish the film was like that. All right, so there you go, folks. That is zombie on her for this week. Holy shit, we took it on play with it a lot longer than we should have. Can we flush it, ladies? Can we please, please flush it? I flush. will. <laughs> I will flush it in stone cold silence. <laughs> uh, consider it, consider it flush. That is it for this week. I want to thank my lovely co cinematic flush of Midwest movie mogul Colleen Griffin and Raging Buddha Bee movie queen Nora Crest. Thank you, ladies. Great job as always. Thank our very special guest, Jade Rieger. Thank you so much. Uh, wow, insight and a great sense of humor and a down-to-earth attitude. This is what this is the guest we like to have on the show. Uh, really, just to come on and just give it the backstory on and have a really good time with us. Thank you so much, Jay. We really, really appreciate you coming with and sitting in with us. Thank you so much, folks. I had a wonderful time. I really enjoyed myself. And it is important that we all have humor about ourselves. So remember that, and thank you, and I'll listen to you from now on. Thank you Aww. so much. Oh, you're adorable. That's awesome. Boy, it doesn't get much better than that, folks. So we're going to be back next week to torture you with something else. Until then, say goodbye, ladies. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Hey, this is Nora Crest, and I want to thank you for listening this week and every week as we flush these turds down our cinematic bowl here in the restroom. If you haven't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play Music so you don't miss a single episode. You can also follow us on Twitter and use hashtag Potter and Family or like us on Facebook, circle us up on Google Plus, and check out all of our episodes at our home restroom on the net, signalsoffury.com. Until next time, remember, we're here to flush it so you don't have to see it. I'm Nora Crest, and this has been the award-winning Soiled Restroom Cinema. <laughs>